Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is one of the most exciting days so far for the hatch build. And I'm super stoked to say we're finally building this short block. I've had this thing from out front for probably close to a year now. Uh, it's just been sitting in the box waiting for us to build it. I've been deployed, but uh, today's finally the day. So we're gonna get everything unboxed. Our pistons, rods, short block, crank, everything like that. We gotta make sure everything's cleaned up and uh, we'll start setting clearances as soon as we can. This is my first time building a short block, so I'm gonna take my time, make sure everything's precise. We are in the basement, as I said in the last video. Uh, the garage is not heated, and it's like 16 degrees outside, and I don't wanna build an engine when it's 16 degrees out. So it's about 70 in here, kinda ideal temps, and we're gonna get this thing built up today. So I think we have all the tools that we're gonna need. We got uh, outside micrometer, we got T gauges, uh, piston ring, end gap, filer. We got a bunch of company 23 tools. Shout out to them for hooking us up with a bunch of tools to build this block and the rest of the car. A um, few sockets, extensions down here. We got our vise, some brake clean, assembly lube, uh, a little feeler gauge to set piston ring end gap. We got a short block in here. Half inch head studs, we're not gonna be putting those on until we get the head gaskets and heads done. And then in this box, we have all of our seals, O-rings, bearings, we got our rods and pistons down below, and we should have everything we need, I'm hoping. Oh, don't forget we got our crankshaft here and torque wrench. I'm gonna get the table set up, get everything unboxed, ready to go, and we'll start cleaning everything off, getting it ready to assemble. We're gonna be running these Manly H Tough rods. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't go I beam if we're building, you know, a really high horsepower uh, EJ. And the reason is, I got this recommendation from Josh Bader because we're gonna be not really tracking the car as much as we're gonna be daily driving it. These are lighter than your traditional I beam rods, which allows for longer bearing life, so I don't have to tear the motor over every so often to replace the, the bearings. Typically under high horsepower, the rod will start to flex kind of side to side when you're revving it out really high, which is why you would go with an I-beam. But because we are daily driving the car, I wanted something a little bit lighter. This is gonna last longer with bearings. And yeah, it's it's a very strong rod. We shouldn't, we shouldn't see any issues there. Moving on to pistons, we're running the Manly Turbo Tough pistons. And we have the extreme duty, so it kind of comes with the upgraded wrist pins. A little bit stronger, a little bit thicker. Um, now, also got this from Josh Bader. The upgraded wrist pins, because they take on a lot of stress when you're running pump gas or even, even methanol. Because I don't know, we're moving to North Carolina. I'm not sure where the nearest E85 station is or if we're going to even be able to get that. Um, if we end up running on pump gas, I wanted an upgraded, stronger wrist pin just in case we're putting that much stress on the motor. The crankshaft, we're just running an OEM crankshaft. We got half inch head stud. And then we're gonna be running ACL race bearings. These are, um, for the rods, I have standard size and then uh, extra oil clearance bearings as well because we can mix and match for ideal uh, rod bearing clearance. And then number five thrust on your main bearings. We should be good to go there. I'm hoping that we won't need any extra oil clearance bearings for um, the mains, because I don't have any, but if we do, we'll uh, we'll have to make some phone calls. We're gonna go ahead and start cleaning everything up. These rods come in a pretty oily packaging to prevent rust. So we're just gonna clean everything up with some brake clean, a rag, and then we can start getting the bearings in, setting clearances on the crankshaft, and we'll go from there.
All right, we're almost ready to start putting in rod bearings. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean these rods one more time. Now make sure when you take your rod caps off, you keep the bolts in the same spot where they came out and keep your rod caps facing the same direction they were when they came out. That's highly important. Let's clean these up one last time. We'll start putting in uh, rod bearings. Now there is the part numbers for you guys if you wanted to get these same ones. Like I said, I think this one is extra oil clearance and then this one is a standard bearing and we can mix and match to get proper clearance. So right now we're sitting at 17.5, which is pretty on the money. I had an extra oil clearing bearing and a standard bearing in here, and it was still a bit tight, so I went ahead and added another extra oil clearance bearing. So now there's two of them in there, and we are spot on. So I'm just gonna go ahead, keep doing the rest of these rods, and then we can move on to the mains. If you guys didn't catch what I was doing, I took the measurement of the crank, and then zeroed out the gauge, took the T-gauge, measured out the inside of the rod and then whatever the difference is is the uh the number you're going for so clearance right now 17.5 and that's pretty on the money with where we want to be We just finished up doing the rods. Uh, everything is right around 17.5, 18-ish. Um, yeah, right in that area, so we're good there. So moving on to the mains, same process. We gotta get the case bolts in the, in the case, get them torqued down, and then we can get our T-gauge in there and start measuring clearances. All right, just finished up setting all the clearances. So up here are the rods. Most of them are all at 0.0175 with number three being at 0.0018. So that one's, those are good. Mains, we got 002, 002, 0021, 002, and then 0021. So all looks good. So now that all the time consuming stuff's out of the way, we can split the cases, get the rods on the crank, drop the crank into the case, put it back together, and then we can work on pistons. All right, so I ended up having to stop last night. I forgot to pick up some uh, gasket maker for the middle of the case halves. But this morning, stopped at AutoZone, grabbed some, and we are good to assemble this short block and finish it up. So I went ahead this morning and cleaned everything up one more time, and uh, we're ready to get these rods bolted onto the crankshaft and get it dropped into the cases. So let's go ahead and do that, get everything torqued down, 
and uh, then we can start doing piston ring end gap. Cases are back together, torqued down. We got the rear main seal in. Shout out Company 23 once again for sending over these tools. That thing made life super easy and a little peace of mind making sure we got that main seal in the right spot. So, um, yeah, everything's torqued in. These two bolts I kind of just tightened with an open ended wrench. But uh, other than that, we are ready to get pistons in, start setting uh, piston ring end gap. But first, I'm going to go get some lunch and uh, then we'll pick right back up where we left off. All right, just got back from lunch. Let's get these pistons out of the box, set our gap, and let's get done with this short block build. So, because Bader is tuning this, and you know it gets a little bit spicy, I'm thinking either high boost or extreme boost. Um, so, at 0 .0065, when you multiply that by the bore, which is bored out to 99.75, converted to inches. Um, when you multiply that out, it's right around 25, 26 thou-ish. And then extreme boost multiplied by 0 0.0075, that's right around 29, a little over 29 thou. So my feeler gauge doesn't have 29 thou. I have 28 and I have 30 and I have 26. So I'm gonna go a little bit on the high side just under the extreme boost and we'll run 028 and uh, I think we'll be good on that. So we'll set our end gap for top and second ring at 0.028 and uh, we'll run it. Tear me up, Koopy. We just got this first top piston ring to 0.028, so this one is good to go. We gotta do the same thing for the second ring and then the rest of the piston rings, and then we can get to assembling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this now that you all understand the process. It is a little bit time consuming, take your time. Um, you don't wanna go too much on the filer or else then you're kinda screwed and you gotta get new rings. So I'm gonna finish these up and then we'll get to putting the rest of this together.
all of the piston ring end gap is set and all the rings are on the pistons themselves we are ready to get these pistons in the block so we broke out the handy dandy company 23 tool and that will compress all the rings together so we can slide them down in there we're going to start with this side and then we'll flip it over and do the other side up assembling the short block it's good to go we're ready for heads so we just gotta wait for them to get back from the machine shop and then we can uh, complete the long block here's a quick look at the completed short block thing looks pretty freaking sick not gonna lie she's super shiny and uh, ready to make some sauce we got these plugs back in I just gotta get some Teflon tape or something and we'll thread them back into the block make sure she ain't gonna leak at all and uh, yeah we'll be good to go I think I'm gonna wrap up this video right here um, until we get the heads, I can't really do much. I am going on a little vacation back home for the next two weeks. I think depending on when we get the heads back for the, the block, um, we might throw the fuel system in the car before we get that back because that's really the only thing we can do at this point. I have everything here ready to go for the fuel system, just need time to do it. As far as that goes, we'll just wait until I get back home and we'll figure it out. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. See y'all later.